So glad you could make it, mi compadre. Hey, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Nothing is wrong. I'm just chilling with the guac from my chip hat. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the Tortilla Sombrero from Despicable Me 2. For the record, I had a very hard time deciding between this and the nacho hat from The Simpsons, but I preferred the use of the hat's rim as the vessel for dipping substances. Speaking of which, first up, we need to make the sombrero. Into the bowl of a stand mixer, we are combining 10 ounces each masa harina and all-purpose flour, along with two tablespoons of kosher salt, tiny whisking until homogenous. And then I've got five ounces of lard, Cubed, which I'm going to scatter across the dry stuff and incorporate by virtue of the stand mixer's paddle attachment. About three minutes on low speed until the mixture resembles wet sand, and then I'm going to start slowly adding some boiling water. Anywhere from 8 to 12 ounces, just add a little bit at a time. You don't want the dough to be too crumbly like this, but you don't want it wet either. What we're ultimately looking for is a freshly popped can of Play-Doh kind of consistency. Ever so slightly crumbly, but not gloopy or sticky. Once we've got that right where we want it, we're going to knead it by hand for a couple minutes on the countertop, just until it comes together in a nice smooth bowl, and then we're going to press it out into a disc, wrap it tightly in plastic wrap, and fridge for at least one hour. This is going to allow the dough to relax and make it more easy to roll out. Whoop, that wasn't a great toss, Andy. You want to try that again? Perfect. Once fully refrigerated, we're going to subdivide the dough and try to help develop its gluten. There are three sort of facets to our sombrero. So I'm going to divide it into three roughly equal pieces, close enough, and then on a lightly floured work surface, I'm going to laminate these pieces of dough, which basically means I'm just going to roll them out into a long strip, fold it in thirds, rotate 90 degrees, and repeat the process. Gluten is normally something we'd want to avoid when making chips, but we need one singular chip that is strong enough not only to hold its own guacamole, but to be worn as a fashion accessory. So go ahead and laminate each piece three to four times, wrap in plastic wrap, and then it's time to take a look at our sombrero mold, which as you can see, it's a bowl inside of a cake pan both of which I'm going to spray down liberally with non-stick spray. And then we're going to roll out the different parts of the sombrero in three separate pieces, starting with the sort of dome thing in the center of the hat. I apologize in advance for my lack of knowledge in sombrero architecture. We're taking one of the three pieces of dough that we've got and rolling it out as thin as we can possibly get it, cutting it into a shape as closely resembling a circle as possible, wrapping it up around a rolling pin, and then using our rolling pin to drape it over our greasy bowl. And then comes the meticulous art of shaping. For First, we have to cut some strategic fold-over points, and then once the bowl has become fully ensconced, we have to press it down and try to even it out, a job made much easier by whatever the hell this thing is. I found it in a drawer, and it turns out to be absolutely perfect for rolling and forming tortilla sombreros. The next piece is the base of our brim, which will eventually serve as our sort of guacamole moat. Once again, rolling this guy out as flat as I can, cutting out a circle in the center, which, once we wrap it up once again around our rolling pin, will, uh, hopefully fit like a glove around the dome of the hat. Uh, nice. And now we must both press this as evenly as possible into the bottom of the mold, trimming the edges and merging it with the bottom of the central dome, trying to make it as flat and as even as possible while repairing any rips. Next and last is the rim of the sombrero. Now this is a 10 inch cake pan, which means a circumference of 31.42 inches, which means two strips 15.71 inches long and about an inch and a half high. Of course, I did my math wrong somewhere and I ended up having to patch it a couple times Times, but either way, lay down the strips, press them flush against the walls of the cake pan, and press them down in the corner to merge with the base of the rim. And there you have it, you have at least formed a tortilla chip sombrero. But now it must be dried out in a 300 degree Fahrenheit convection oven for one to one and a half hours. It should shrink and darken just a little bit. Once you've let it cool for about five minutes, you can pull it out the pan, pop out the molding bowl, stand in awe of yourself that you didn't somehow destroy it in that process, and let it cool on a wire rack for about another hour. Again, this is going to help dry it out before we deep fry it, or at least our closest approximation of deep frying it. You see, I do not have a thing big enough to deep fry this in, so I'm going to treat it kind of like a porchetta, heating a whole bunch of oil to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and very gently and very cautiously, and with the full weight of the knowledge of what I am doing, ladle it over every facet of the tortilla chip hat. 
boy, I sure do get to say some crazy things on this show. Then, once again, very carefully, we're going to dump out any excess oil collected in the brim. Once again, you should stand in awe of yourself that you've made it this far before draining on some paper towels, generously salting with kosher salt while it's still warm so that it adheres, and allowing to cool completely about 30 minutes, during which time we can make our guacamole. We're going to need a not insignificant amount of guacamole for this hat, so I have here four large ripe Haas avocados that I'm going to cut in half and remove their pits, and then I'm going to score their flesh with a butter knife for easier mashing. Once you have cut a cross-hatched pattern into the flesh, you can scoop it out with a spoon, rinsing and repeating with the rest of your avocados. Then, first and foremost, we gotta hit these guys with lime juice. I'm using three limes, which is both gonna add a whole lot of flavor and prevent the avocados from turning brown too early. I'm also gonna add one whole, small, finely chopped red onion, one whole, small, finely chopped jalapeno, ribs and seeds removed, and three whole, large, finely chopped cloves of garlic. Also a little shake or about a half teaspoon of ground cumin, and a whole bunch of finely chopped green vegetal substance that's definitely cilantro. It's definitely not parsley so that I can eat this and enjoy it. I would not go to those kinds of lengths to deceive you. And of course we have to add a big old pinch of kosher salt and a few big twists of freshly ground black pepper before realizing that our intended bowl is way too small and that we're gonna have to upgrade, and mashing together with a fork until the desired consistency is achieved. I personally like guacamole with visible chunks, so I have targets to aim for. And with that, it's time to fill up the brim of our tortilla chip hat. Make sure it's evenly distributed, both for aesthetics and for the sake of weight distribution. Because what good is a tortilla chip sombrero if you can't actually wear it? And this one is definitely a size and a half too small for me, but it still does the job. It might not be perfect, but it is my very first edible fashion accessory. To wit, let's see how it tastes. And you might think of the tortilla chip sombrero as a fun hands-free way to consume your favorite snacks. And while it tastes surprisingly good, it's actually dastardly difficult to practically consume. You have no idea what's going on up there, you're just sort of diving blindly, hoping that the hat doesn't disintegrate with every crack, and that you'll find guacamole pater with every stab. That being said, it's the most fun I've had eating chips and guac in a long time. I don't really know how you would ever feasibly eat the center of this thing, and I don't care. It's a Cinco de Mayo miracle, and I just could not be happier with it. That being said, I know that one of my dear friends is going to be even more excited than I am. Yeah, Weissman, how you doing? Babby's calling me in the middle of me making fries, dude? What's up, man? Oh. Yo, oh my god. It looks so, it's like a that. bowler hat, he's so cute. Yeah, it's like a pork pie it's hat. Uh, it worked out really well. It, the, the chip is a little thick, but uh, I wanted to show it to you and try to uh, tempt you out to, to come out to New York so we can do another collab now the world's getting back to normal. Dude, you know I'm already there, but if there's no sombrero hat awaiting me, then I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know, that's like, my, that's like the number one thing. I've fantasized about that for years in my sleep. No, dude, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for, for hopping in. I'm sorry that I don't have this for you to share right now, but uh, I'll have one waiting for you. Come to New York, I'll come to Austin. I'll be there, thank you Babish, I love you.